as you as you would have heard, we begin looking at the uh, mini series, if you would like to call it that, on rest. And rest is something that we are all very familiar with. Right? Of course, if someone is bothering you too much, we have the local phrase rest minute. You know, I just want them to give you some space, some time, you know, rest me, right? And of course, the the one that persons use very often, which is from scripture, and sometimes we use it, I guess not in the way that it was intended, but we all know the saying that there is no rest for the wicked. But rest is a very important human term, right? Unlike machines, which if properly service could run continually, humans don't have that, I don't want to say luxury, but we don't have that capacity. We need rest. And uh, throughout history, persons would have um, tried to manipulate the the work rest ratio in terms of how much days for the week is optimal and we always seem to come back to seven seven seems to be the optimal with six days of work and one day of rest but where did we get this rest from and of course this morning i am i'm quite sure that i'm as they would say preaching to the converted, preaching to the choir, because all of us here would have some sort of Adventist connection, so we would understand clearly where this rest comes from. But I will use this time to remind us and hopefully bring back that joy of rest into our minds. If you turn with me first to Genesis chapter 2, and looking at verses 1 to 3, we are introduced to this rest. In Genesis chapter 2, we see the end of the creation week. And it says, Thus the heavens and earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested. On the seventh day from all his work which he had made, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Of course, we all understand and appreciate that we serve a omnipotent God, one that does not need rest. So why did he rest? He could not have been tired from his six days of creation. He, according to our understanding, was in existence from time immemorial, from before we could measure time. He was in existence and he would not have rested up until the seventh day of this creation week. Why did he rest? As, as an example for us. It was not because he was tired. Even if we take into consideration Adam and Eve, Adam would have been created, Adam and Eve would have been created on the sixth day. And according to how we read and understand the, the excerpt, Adam would have on that day, either before or after Eve was created, participated in naming the animals. God would have probably carried them to their home in the garden eastward of Eden and showed them how they could manipulate the plants, the trees, the vines to create a home for themselves. And that would have been their activity on the first day. And the day after that would have been the Sabbath, would have been a rest. What was the purpose of this rest? 
Well, Adam, I've been so tired from one day of work. Adam, freshly created God's masterpiece. Will he have exerted himself so much in that one day that he needed rest? No. Because this rest, our Sabbath rest, is more than just a stop from work. Of course, the commandments, every time we read it, it always mentions labor. Because if we change from six days of inactivity to a day of rest, then that rest day might be have more activity than the other six days. So just the fact that we are observing the Sabbath, that we are observing rest, tells us that we should be engaging in some type of activity. Those of us who are working, then we should be faithful stewards on our job. We should be, for the six days, doing something intentional on our jobs. There are persons who might not be working. You are at home. What do you do? Do you sit and binge Netflix six days a week? No. Find something to do at home. Engage in some kind of activity. The children might be saying, well, it's holidays, Java. We don't do summer again, so we have July, August vacation. We are free. I am not doing anything. But no, that is not what our theology teaches us. Yes, I'm bringing theology into this. We are to be active for our six days. So yes, you are home from school, but you can engage yourself in learning something online. You could engage yourself in learning a trade, do something with your hands, get a hobby, do some chores. There are many things that we could find ourselves actively doing for six days to ensure that we better appreciate our day of rest. And of course, our day of rest is also about reconnecting with Jesus Christ. That day is when we have less things to do. We put away all the physical things. We put away all the stressful things. And therefore, we let our body and mind be free to better appreciate our communication with Jesus. It will be amiss if we attempt to speak of Sabbath rest and we don't bring in the commandment. And of course, we all know the commandment, Exodus 20 verses 8 to 11. And most of us, if not all, could repeat these verses by heart. It is things that we grew up on. It is things that we have ingrained in ourselves as it is part of our identity. But anytime we come to the commandments, I remind us that we should not start with thou shall not. The commandment starts from the beginning of the book of the chapter of Exodus 8, where Jesus remind, where God reminds us that I am the Lord thy God which brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord is saying that I brought you out of the house of sin. I am the one that rescued you. I took you from where you were, and I have you where you are today. Because of this, I now want you to respond to my act of love by doing these things. This is what the commandments are supposed to represent to us. Of course, when recording them in, Ex in Exodus, Moses looked at the spiritual aspect of it. He says, you know, God rescued us. He took us from a life of sin. He brought us to this current position. Let us respond to God in this way. When he was re recording the commandments in Deuteronomy, he, of course, repeating to them all that he would have taught them for their entire journey as they were about to enter the promised land. He took a different aspect on it. It's the same commandments, but he started by telling them, remember, taking the social look at it. He said, remember, you were once slaves in Egypt. Now that you are not a slave, 
Be careful how you relate to other people. Be careful how you relate to God. He says, remember when you were a slave in Egypt? Remember the, remember the freedoms that you would want to have? Remember how you would want to have that freedom to enjoy that Sabbath rest? Now that you are free, now that you would have servants, now that you would have persons working for you, allow them to also enjoy the Sabbath rest. Because Sabbath is not just for us. Sabbath is also for all the persons that we interact with. So if you are hiring persons, if you are in charge of persons, then you need to do what you can to ensure that they too have a chance to enjoy that Sabbath rest that they too could enjoy that communion with God, that they too could enjoy time with Jesus. And of course, we understand that in this world that we live in, that in this postmodern world, as some people want to call it, persons will want to tell us that, you know, this, this Sabbath is an Old Testament thing. You know, that... Jesus died on the cross, and those things are done away with. They would do away with the Sabbath, but they would keep all the other commandments. These are the same people who would encourage you not to kill, not to steal, not to commit adultery, to honor your parents, and all these things are good. But they are just as good as the commandment to keep God's Sabbath holy. I think one of the problems that we have is that we would have engaged with this passage as Ten Commandments, while God just sees it as a law of love. He would have divided it by, for the most into two parts, our relationship with God and our relationship with man. But since we broke it into Ten Commandments, we are now able to, you know, put in and take out as we feel. But God says, you know what, These, this is how I want you to interact with me. This is how I want you to interact with each other. I want you to live like this again because as a response of my love. But the, the idea that Sabbath would have been done away with at creation would have been dealt with in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 4, and if we read verses 9 to 11, or let's take it from verse 8, from verse 8 to 11, Hebrews 4, reading from verses 8 to 11, Paul is telling us here, for if Jesus had given them rest, then he would not afterward then would he not afterward spoken of another day? Because persons often want to say, you know, Jesus came and he said, I come to do away the laws. I come to change the Sabbath. So Paul is asking them now, if Jesus came to change the rest, came to change Sabbath, would he have not tell, told us that, you know, what, the seventh is no longer applicable. This is the one that is applicable. Wouldn't he have told us that, you know what, let us not focus on this day anymore. Let us focus on this new day. Jesus focused a lot on the law. He focused and remembering that Jesus relates to us where we are. So Jesus was saying, you know what? You all say, don't kill. I was saying, let me take it even further. Don't hate. So Jesus often had exposition on the laws. If this is one of the laws that he wanted to change, why would he have not spoken about this? This is what Paul is asking them. So Paul says, you know, Jesus didn't do that. So the fact is, they remain it, uh, therefore, a rest for the people of God. They remain it, a Sabbath for the people of God. God is reminding us that we should not work ourselves to oblivion. We should not be so focused on all our things, our gainings, our gettings, our earthly desires that 
we completely forget the one who gave us the power to get wealth. That we forgive, that we forget the one who gave us the ability to work. That we forget the one who created our minds and gave us the capacity to study all these various subjects that we are doing. The one who gave us the opportunity to get to that job. He says in all our things, let us not forget who he is. There remaineth a rest for the people of God. God says that even as time goes on, even though we are, as we approach his second coming, he still doesn't just want to wait until. He says, you know, that one day we would be together again. We would have, we would be having face-to-face -face conversations. It would be a glorious time. But he says, I'm not just waiting until that time. He says, every week, let's, let's practice it. He says, every week, let us get together and begin that lovely interaction that we will have in heaven. Every week, let us spend time with each other, get to know each other, let us enjoy each other's presence. Jesus never intended for the Sabbath to be stressful for us. Again, if you focus more on the thou shall and thou shall not, then the Sabbath is going to be stressful. Because you're going to be sitting down there for and thinking, all right, so for this 24 hours, I, I cannot do this. All right? You know, I like to do that, but for, for this 24 hours, I cannot do that. For this 24 hours, I cannot, you know, think on. No, let us focus on the things that we can do on the Sabbath. We, we have the, the song that we sing in Children's Division. We can go to church. We can see a friend. We could... Enjoy nature. There are many things that we can do on the Sabbath. But if we only focus on the things that we cannot do, then it is going to be a burden. It is going to be tiresome. It will be as we say, we pulling down the sun because we want the Sabbath to finish so we could get back to the things that we like. We need to find enjoyable things to do on the Sabbath. I'm not saying to while out, and I'm saying that still keep your Sabbath holy, but there are things that you can do to enjoy your Sabbath experience. Paul continues in Hebrews saying, for he had entered into his rest. He also sees from his own works as God did from his. Jesus did just as Jesus did while he walked on this earth in his death week just as was done in creation. He sees from his rest. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Let us work so that we could enjoy our Sabbaths. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So this idea that the Sabbath is done away with is not a new thing. It's not a, a brand new concept. Paul was dealing with this. See, there, there are those among us who think, you know, there's no more Sabbath. We are free to do as we like. we covered by grace. We're saying, no, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. I am encouraging you today, from today, and the, you better enjoy the Sabbath experience when you prepare for it. So from today, from Wednesday, begin to plan to enjoy your Sabbath experience. Begin to put things in place so that when the Sabbath comes, you can engage in Sabbath activities. You can avoid non-Sabbatical activities and you can have an enjoyable Sabbath day. There remain it, a rest for the people of God. Let us enjoy the rest that God has provided for us. And let us, be, let us get closer to him as we wait for that glorious day.